Alright, I think we're all familiar with what an iceberg image is. It was kind of a big meme back in 2020. Basically, someone takes a stock iceberg image and puts a specific topic on it, collecting a whole bunch of random facts about that topic, and the deeper the iceberg gets, the more obscure the facts get too. There's been countless videos of numerous iceberg images. And all of this was technically started by Mishkods with his great Mario 64 iceberg video. His content pretty much inspired me to want to make my own iceberg video too. Specifically about one of my favorite video games, Sonic Adventure on the Sega Dreamcast. There's already been a good amount of Sonic icebergs and I'm sure Sonic Adventure oriented icebergs. But the iceberg image I'll be using for this video was created by Speeps Highway, who spent specializes in uploading and archiving anything Sonic Adventure. So if there's anyone Sonic Adventure iceberg that I feel I could completely trust, it's most definitely gonna be Speeps. I recommend checking out their content if you have not. I'll put a link to their channel and social media in the description. They make a lot of great Sonic Adventure videos and are also responsible for some good memes on Twitter too. So definitely check them out and give them a follow. This video not only would have been possible because of Speeps, but also The Cutting Room 4, Sonic Retro, and I'm sure many others. And another big special thanks to my friend Omar for helping me write and research this video. I really appreciate his help with this because I probably wouldn't have got this video finished. So when Mishkaz did his Mario 64 iceberg video, he used the Mario icon to explain how well he knew each section of the iceberg. Sonic Adventure doesn't have something that's the equivalent to this, so I'm gonna be using a customized life icon from the Mario 64 PC mod where you can play as Sonic. I know it's technically in the shape of the emblems from Sonic Heroes, but whatever, it's cute. Anyways, with that introduction out the way, let's dive right into the Sonic Adventure iceberg. Tokyo Game Show Menus Sonic Adventure was first shown off at the Tokyo Game Show in 1998, just a few months before its release in December 1998. While the final game and the Tokyo Game Show build are pretty different, some leftovers of the Tokyo Game Show menus can still be found in all versions of the game, mainly by changing the game value depending on your region. I'm not too sure why these are still in the game's files, but seeing how Adventure 1 was rushed out the door to coincide with the launch of the Dreamcast, I'm not too shocked that earlier prototype elements are still in the game. SADX Differences This one is a pretty major topic and it's probably the most well-known thing about Sonic Adventure's various ports. Basically, when Sonic Adventure was ported to GameCube as Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, the people in charge of the port not only upgraded the character models, but also made a large assortment of changes to the game's textures and just overall, making the game look a bit worse than bland in my opinion. I don't want to go into every little change that was made because I'll fucking be here for hours so I'd highly recommend looking up the Ultimate Guide to Sonic Adventure DX since, put together by PKR and company. It basically covers and breaks down just about every change the DX ports made to Sonic Adventure. I also recommend checking out Cybershell's video on the DX ports because he covers a pretty good amount of stuff there too. Beta Windy Valley Windy Valley is the second action stage in the game, and it's a pretty solid level. It's one of the more linear-focused stages. However, this level wasn't always going to be as straightforward. In fact, much earlier versions of Sonic Adventure featured a heavily different kind of Windy Valley. This early version of Windy Valley would actually be restored and reconstructed by fans in a mod for the PC version of Sonic Adventure DX. So you can actually play the original Windy Valley if you wanted to, and I honestly prefer this this version of the level over the one in the final game. It's probably one of the best 3D levels ever made for a Sonic game and it was never officially used. Kind of a shame. But at least we have a way of playing it nowadays. Tales and Emerald Coast Sonic Adventure had six different stories to play through, which also gave you six different characters to play as. However, not all six characters can enter all 11 stages in the game. When it comes to Tails, he only has five levels and Emerald Coast isn't even one of them. However, there is a trick you can do in almost all versions of Sonic Adventure, where you can make Tails fly over the gate in the Station Square hub area, and have Tails trigger the level warp and allow him to play through Emerald Coast. And something tells me that the developers were probably aware that Tails could glitch into Emerald Coast, because you're only really allowed to play through the first act of the level. Entering the second part just leads to Tails falling into a dark void, warping him back to Station Square. There's also a trick to warp Knuckles into the level too, by the way. Sky Chase Dragon 
Sonic Adventure has a stupid amount of cut content, one of which included this mechanical dragon boss of sorts that you were supposed to encounter in Sky Chase. Even though he doesn't appear in the final game, you can still find the files for the dragon and can even load him through hacking. It's unknown why this dragon got cut, but it sure would have been a weird inclusion. Sonic Jam Assets Sonic Jam was a game collection on the Sega Saturn that included the first three Sonic games and Knuckles. However, there was a Sonic World option where you can go and control Sonic in a 3D space. The Sonic World from Sonic Jam was basically a prototype version of Sonic Adventure. This is further backed up by some prototype screenshots shown off at a conference about two decades later. By the looks of it, it appears Sonic was still gonna have his classic design. While every character in Sonic Adventure looks like their modern designs, there are still some leftover assets from their original Sonic Jam models. The most obvious one I can remember is in the original Dreamcast version. The Sky Chase levels still have Sonic and Tails in their original Jam models, which can easily be seen at the end of the first Sky Chase when the camera rotates in front of them. Cowgirl Sign. In the original 1998 Japanese version of Sonic Adventure, Casinopu has included this massive cowgirl sign in the upper section of the stage, and going up to the sign will apparently cause it to moan. Suggestively, obviously, this wasn't gonna sit well for areas outside of Japan, so the cowgirl sign was removed from the 1999 international versions, and pretty much every subsequent release of Sonic Adventure in the future. But for those who are curious, you can install a mod on the PC version that restores the cowgirl sign. Have fun! Downloadable content. The Sega Dreamcast was one of, if not the first home console to incorporate online functionality. This meant DLC for Sonic Adventure could be sent out and downloaded through the VMUs. A lot of the DLC was very holiday oriented. There were also a few sponsorships, Y2K Celebration, Sonic's 10th Anniversary, etc etc. Speeps made a series of videos showcasing every DLC released for the Dreamcast version of the game, so I recommend checking those videos out. However, even though SADX did add a few things to the game, pretty much none of the DLC from the Dreamcast version was carried over to the DX ports. And while the HD port does have downloadable content, it's mainly just for buying the DX upgrades, specifically mission mode and whatnot, so none of the Dreamcast DLC was included. The only way you could play the DLC now is either by emulation, or just install mods on the PC version. Casinopolis statue. A lot of people know about this, but in Casinopolis, there's a Sonic statue in the center of the lobby area. You can get a better look of it in Knuckles stage, but as Sonic, you have to actually build the statue up by collecting and depositing a stupid amount of rings. It'll take a long time, but it's still a pretty neat detail. I always thought the statue looked pretty cool when I was playing as Knuckles, though he does show how freaking fragile the statue is, because he can punch a crack on the foot and cause the whole thing to fall apart. I like the context of Sonic probably spending countless hours collecting thousands of rings to build the full statue, only for Knuckles to tear it down later. Way to go, Knucklehead. Secret Capsule At the end of the final acts in the classic games, Sonic would pop open a capsule and all the animals inside would be free. The capsules return in Sonic Adventure, but this time, they're pretty much the equivalent to the goal rings in the future games. I don't entirely know what secret capsule this iceberg is talking about. According to Omar, it might be referring to a capsule that's out of bounds in the final egg, which is apparently only in the Dreamcast version, but I really don't know. Katamatsu DLC Pre-Patch The Katamatsu DLC was a New Year's 1999 celebration that was actually lost for about 20 years, until a fan called Moop the Hedgehog managed to miraculously find the DLC in 2019 on a used 4X memory unit that he bought in Japan. It was one of the luckiest finds that could have ever been made. Part of the reason why this DLC was so hard to find was because when it initially released in Japan on December 26, 1998, it apparently caused a glitch to occur that made Knuckles' story unbeatable when the DLC was installed. A patched version of the Katamatsu DLC did get released a few days later on the 29th, until the content altogether was removed on January 7th, 1999. And in case you guys were wondering, the version of the DLC that Moop the Hedgehog found was the patched version, meaning the original glitched version of the DLC may be lost forever, which... does it really matter? E3 NPCs. 
Sonic Adventure was first shown off outside of Japan at E3 1999. I'm assuming this part of the iceberg is referring to how some of the NPCs in the hub areas had slightly different dialogue compared to what's in the final game. The one example I can think of is how this one kid references both the events of Sonic CD and Sonic 3 when you talk to him in the E3 build, but in the final game, they cut out the Sonic CD reference for some reason. There's probably a lot more early dialogue changes I could bring up, but I don't want to be here forever. Pachikamaka's eyes. Pachikamaka is Takal's father, his name's really stupid. And he was also kind of responsible for unleashing the Wrath of Chaos in the past. His eyes are usually just pitch yellow, but if you look at his character model, he does have actual modeled blue eyes. But you never see them in the final game for some reason. Unlocking Sonic. Within the game's code, there's a piece of text that says, now you can play as Sonic. You get a text like that every time you unlock a character in Sonic Adventure. But from the beginning, Sonic is always playable, so you never have to unlock him. Ergo, this text is never used. Sonic RPG Part of the reason why Sonic Adventure had multiple playable characters and a far more in-depth story for the games at the time was because Takashi Azuka actually planned and pushed for the game to originally be an RPG. I'm not too sure how long this angle for the game lasted. My best guess is that Azuka changed his mind after seeing what the Dreamcast could offer compared to the Saturn in terms of space and graphical power. A good choice in the end, but I also wonder how a Sonic Adventure RPG would have padded out. It'd still be neat to see a proper home console Sonic RPG be made in the future. Also fuck Sonic Chronicles. Alternate Chaos Mural After beating the level Lost World as Sonic, we get a cutscene of Sonic looking upon a mural foreshadowing perfect chaos. In the preview version of Sonic Adventure DX, it includes a more vibrant colored version of the same mural, and it actually gives it more of a sinister look. I really wish they used this in the final version of the game. The Man 3 at the end of Tail Story during the Eggwalker boss, for some reason you can see a poster for a fictional movie called The Man 3. This poster only appears in the Eggwalker boss fight and only in the Dreamcast version. Every other time you go to this area in Station Square, you'll just see the usual Chow in Space poster, which the DX ports always use. Crystal Ring Bug the Crystal Ring is one of the upgrades Sonic can get that reduces the time needed to charge up a Light Dash. This upgrade is completely optional and you don't need it to beat the game, but for some reason, if you decide to go get the Crystal Ring in Super Sonic Story, once you quit the story and try to re-enter it, you'll see a story briefing but then the game will just crash. You see, whenever you collect any upgrade in the game, it'll autosave your progress. For whatever reason, even though you can go into any level in the game just fine in the Super Sonic story, if you try collecting a power-up, the unexpected autosave will just cause the game to fuck up. So I guess the Super Sonic story wasn't expecting a new event to be autosaved. Unused 1997 Textures Development of Sonic Adventure began around April 1997, about a year and a half before the Dreamcast debuted. I'm gonna assume this entry is referring to the original Sonic Jam look that Adventure had, considering both the leftovers in the final game, and the fact that Sonic Jam's Sonic World was made on a prototype version of Adventure 1. Station Square Recaps Whenever you stop playing midway through a story in Sonic Adventure, every time you boot the game back up, you'll see a recap from the perspective of whichever character you were playing as in the story. I always liked this idea, even though I rarely ever see it since I usually try to play through a story in Sonic Adventure in just one sitting. S missions. Again, I'm not 100% sure what this is referring to. Sonic Adventure DX got a new feature called Mission Mode, where you can do up to 60 different missions as each character. Sonic Adventure didn't have a ranking system, and the S rank didn't really appear in the mainline games until Sonic 06. I'm gonna assume this is referring to Mission Mode. If not, oh well, I'm dumb. Chaos Removed Voice In almost every version of Sonic Adventure, Chaos doesn't have any spoken dialogue at all. However, in the original 1998 Japanese release of Sonic Adventure, in the cutscene where Chaos unleashes his wrath on the Echidna tribe, you can actually hear Chaos making chow noises. <laughs>
for whatever reason, these Chao voice clips were removed in subsequent releases. This original version of the cutscene basically builds up the theory that Chaos might have actually been a Chao at some point. That's kind of a weird and also fucking major plot element for Sonic Team to want to retcon not even a year after the game's original release. Address Directory for some bizarre reason, in the root of the Japanese version's disc, it contains a bunch of data for random Japanese commercial addresses, including but not limited to stadiums, hospitals, cemeteries, and even Capcom. Huh. Gliding Tutorial this one kind of connects back to the Tokyo Game Show leftovers from earlier. In that build, when you choose Knuckles, you get a few tutorial prompts explaining how to glide. These prompts aren't used in the final game, but they could still be found in the game's files. Secret Rooms This one is... super fucking vague. I'm not too sure what it's referring to when it says Secret Rooms. Same with Casinopolis clone. I have no clue what that one means either. Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna move on. Knuckles' voice. Knuckles in Sonic Adventure was voiced by Michael McGoharn. This was the only time he ever voiced Knuckles in the games, and despite the whole direction being a bit of a mess, I actually think he did a solid job, and I really like that calm voice he gave Knuckles. However, in the E3 trial version, it appears to be using a completely different Knuckles voice. As far back as I can remember, I've been living here on this dark island. As far back as I can remember, I've been living here on this dark island. Back in Station Square, I see. What's going on here anyway? Back in Station Square, I see. What's going on here anyway? I may not know the whole story behind this, but perhaps it's better that way. I'm at peace once more. I may not know the whole story behind this, but perhaps it's better that way. I'm at peace once more. I'm gonna assume that these are just earlier takes, and maybe at some point Mick Gahan decided to re-record Knuckles' voice to give it a more calmer demeanor. A good choice in the end. Untitled Motorcycle Game Around the time Sega revealed the Dreamcast in May 1998, the first ever screenshot of Sonic Adventure would leak online. Looking at it now, it's a very grainy photo of Sonic running in Speed Highway, but back in 98, because of how low quality the photo was, people online were debating if this was even for a Sonic game, with a few fans suggesting that it was probably a screenshot from some untitled motorcycle game. That's kinda crazy to think about when looking back at this photo. Sorry Charlie. During any story when you're on the egg carrier after it's taken off, if you talk to one of the monitors outside, it'll tell you, the egg carrier has taken off. Sorry Charlie. This line has no relevance to any character in the game. It's just saying sorry Charlie for no reason. Could you just imagine someone named Charlie playing this game at like 3 in the morning and they end up discovering this easter egg? Just a thought. City Hall Clock. In one of the areas in Station Square, there's a city hall where Knuckles can enter his part of Speed Highway, and it's also where Sonic exits that level too. For some reason, there's another clock behind City Hall that you never get to see during regular gameplay. It was apparently a leftover from the auto demo. Also, apparently the City Hall clock is the only clock in the Station Square hub that actually moves and isn't a flat texture. It's a pretty cool detail, but it doesn't move in real time since it just resets every time you re-enter the section in Station Square where City Hall is. Hotel Puzzle At the Station Square Hotel, there's a puzzle that can appear when the doors to the pool area in the hotel are closed. You can't really do this puzzle as any other character but Big. And even then, you still have to glitch yourself into the hotel area to even activate the puzzle, since Big isn't supposed to be allowed inside until after Ice Cap. And you also can't play the puzzle as Big if you played Ice Cap beforehand. So it's really fucking tricky to get this weird ass easter egg to work. Chaos 3 and 5. Throughout Sonic Adventure stories, we fight about five different forms of Chaos. We fight Chaos Zero at the start of Sonic's story, we briefly see Chaos 1 in a cutscene, we fight Chaos 2 as Knuckles, we fight both Chaos 4 and 6 like three times, and there's Chaos 7 aka Perfect Chaos, who is of course the final boss. However, the two forms of Chaos that we never come across are Chaos 3 and Chaos 5. They're never seen or mentioned at all, so they've just been a total mystery for fans. Gamma is useless. This is kind of a harsh entry, but I can also sorta of see where it's coming from. 
Gamma's adventure and general place in the story could easily be cut out the game. It doesn't really have that much of an effect on the overall plot. And in case you're wondering, yes, even Big's story had more importance. It even had an importance in Heroes for fuck's sake. I still enjoyed playing Gamma's stages, and I found the end of his story to be overall sad. But that doesn't really change the fact that Gamma's story is almost entirely filler. Eggman created Knuckles. What the fuck? Okay, so as a lot of Sonic fans know, the first appearance of Knuckles the Echidna was in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. From the start of the game, we see that Knuckles is working in cahoots with Dr. Eggman, only for him to realize that Eggman was just manipulating him so he could steal the Master Emerald. Thus, Knuckles changes sides and asks Sonic for help. In Sonic Adventure, something kinda similar happens. Eggman once again tricks Knuckles into thinking that Sonic is going after the Master Emerald shards. Afterwards, Knuckles realizes that that Eggman tricked him, and was just using him to distract Sonic to get his hands on the Chaos Emeralds. There was also a brief bit in Sonic Advance 2 where you fight Knuckles for one bit, only to find out that he was once again tricked by Eggman. Okay, I thought I had a point to make when providing all this summary. I was gonna go into this deep psychological exclamation about how Knuckles was always listening to Eggman, and got tricked more than once because maybe he saw Eggman as a father figure. Alas, Eggman potentially created Knuckles and fabricated this whole Echidna tribe backstory into his memory to potentially take advantage of his gullibleness in the future. But then I realized that Speeps probably put this on the iceberg as a goof. So I'm just gonna move on before I lose my mind again. Strategy Guide Lore Okay, I don't know which strategy guide this is referring to. There's a strategy guide for the original Dreamcast version by Brady Games, but there's also the SADX strategy guide by Prima, which I do own, but I have no fucking clue what lore this iceberg is referring to, and I'm not reading all this shit. I have like 50 tabs open on my Firefox right now while writing this video, so I'm just gonna say go track down these strategy guides and leave a comment telling me what interesting lore is in them, and also call me out for how I'm a lazy asshole who doesn't want to read things. So moving on, Sonic Tonic. Okay, so during the 1998 Tokyo International Forum, Sonic Team put together this really neat and also pretty adorable production presentation about Sonic Adventure. During the video, art director Kazuyuki Hashinu shows off something that he pours on his hair, and just watch. <laughs> Sonic Tonic! <laughs> This video is so cute. If you love Sonic Adventure, then definitely watch this full video if you haven't. You won't regret it. The Tales Ghost. The best thing I could find about this one is an old video from 2008 showing someone playing Sonic Adventure and while in Lost World, Tails kept popping in and out of existence next to Sonic every time he turned around. This video is super old and barely has a lot of views. So, yeah, it's on the iceberg. Game Bug. Sonic Adventure was rushed out for a Christmas 1998 release, and had a lot of glitches as a result. Even the international versions, which came out a year later and did fix a few bugs, still had some glitches to boot. Not to mention, every subsequent DX port has their own set of problems. The most I could find about a game bug on the cutting room floor is this Big the Cat crash. Apparently, if you cast a lore and end up falling into a kill plane during it, it'll make the game free. This glitch is apparently present in every version of the game. I have no clue why they never fixed this glitch, but try it at home, kids. Start coordinates. There are many stages in the game that include starting coordinates for characters that don't normally go to that specific stage or act. They're mainly positions used by other characters, but sometimes they're entirely different due to the coordinates being set in an early version of the game. Electric Chair Model During Act 2 of Red Mountain, one of the prison cells is holding this empty electric chair model. I have no clue why this is even here. I'm guessing someone at Sonic Team had a morbid sense of humor. Knuckles Clan Textures The Knuckles Clan is a group of echidnas you can visit in the past during Tails, Knuckles, and Amy's stories. You also see them during the Super Sonic story when they ambush the Master Emerald Shrine. During this cutscene in particular, a weird texture glitch can happen that you can't really see too well because of the lighting, but sometimes the game can load the wrong textures for the echidnas, making them look all fucked up. 
concept art as textures. During Sonic Adventure's development, Sonic Team took a trip around certain parts of the world, mainly South America, so that they could get some inspiration for some of the levels and environments to use in the game. They took plenty of photographs during the trip, often putting Sonic plushies in the photos too. And some of the photos from their trip were actually used as textures in the game, which is pretty cool. Tails Battle At certain points in adventure, characters will fight one another when they cross paths in their respective stories. But there's never a section of a story where another character has to fight Tails. There actually is some unused text in the game that reads Versus Tails, which would have shown up in the field select menu. But since we never fight Tails in the actual game, we never get to see this text. Rouge Cameo Rouge the Bat is a character that first appeared in Sonic Adventure 2. However, Rouge's first voice actress, Lonnie Manella, was actually the English voice director for the games between 1999 and 2004. Obviously, she doesn't voice Rouge in Adventure 1, but you can briefly hear her voice in certain parts of the game. She's the female train announcer, she's also the Twinkle Park announcer, the default menu voice, and even Eggman's computer. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. Welcome to Twinkle Park. Emergency! Emergency! Dispose of any intruders! Limited Edition Leak vs. Rental Differences The Limited Edition version of Sonic Adventure was released through Hollywood Video in July 1999, just two months before the game's international release. Even though this version was distributed just near the game's official release, it actually has a few differences. For starters, none of the Dreamcast Online features work, the language setting also doesn't work unless you hack it, plus the cutscenes in this version are still synced with the Japanese voices, so the lip syncing is even more whack. Apparently, some of the object changes from the action stages are still unchanged from the 1998 release, too. The Cutting Room 4 has a pretty solid page discussing the differences, so I recommend reading it up. Chica Monkeys Well, I don't know what this part of the iceberg is talking about. There's a monkey badnik in the game called Kiki, but not Chica, so I'm not sure what's up. But I guess while I'm still on the topic of monkeys, did anyone else find it kind of weird how there's an item in the game called the Monkey Detonation Switch, which you dig out of dirt as knuckles, and literally the only function this thing has is that it allows you to blow up a few Kiki robots. Not sure why, but this item always stuck with me. 3D Blast is a prototype. Sonic 3D Blast was released in 1996. It was the last major Sonic game to be released on the Genesis, while also being one of the first ones on the Saturn. Even though 3D is in the name, it's mainly just a bird's eye view game where you run around as Sonic collecting flickies, and you have to take them to a goal ring over and over again. I don't think 3D Blast has ever officially been seen as a prototype for Sonic Adventure. However, there is some credence to this entry. One of the composers for the Genesis version of 3D Blast was Jun Sanoi, who would later be the sound director for Adventure. A few songs from 3D Blast were actually rearranged to be in Sonic Adventure soundtrack. Not only that, but a demo tape for 3D Blast soundtrack was discovered and uploaded by Traveler's Tales former CEO, John Burton. I recommend looking up these demo tracks if you're a huge Adventure fan because they're super fascinating. Satan Texture the Satan texture is this weird, creepy looking texture that can be found while fighting Chaos 2. I never noticed it before until Speeps had to explain this part of the iceberg on Twitter. Spooky. Team Andromeda in the game's code, there's some developer text that reads Team Andromeda. This is a reference to the video game company of the same name, who were responsible for the Panzer Dragoon series on Sega Saturn. Sonic and Tails Singing at the end of Sonic and Tails' stories, you may notice that their lips are moving in the final cutscene, but they're not saying anything. They're actually meant to be singing along to their respective theme songs. It's a super corny detail and I really like it. Knuckles Secret Uppercut Knuckles has pretty standard punch moves, but he was originally gonna have an uppercut move too. But it was sadly cut from the final game for whatever reason. Jingle E Jingle E is a track that you can find in the game's sound test. Supposedly, it was meant to be played during the Dreamcast version's online features, but since the online capabilities were shut off long ago, this track is basically never heard in the game, unless you go to the sound test. Quite a shame. It's a super short track, but I really like the way it sounds. It's pretty groovy.
Hail Shower animation. When playing Casinopolis as Sonic, you can go to a shower room, and weirdly enough, you can see a unique animation of Sonic taking a shower. Tails can also go to Casinopolis, but his version of the level keeps him in the dilapidated way section, instead of the main lobby. Despite that, through modding, you can play as Tails in Sonic's Casinopolis, and he has his own shower animation, supposedly. Wow. Unwinnable treasure hunt. This is another one where I couldn't find any info on it, but maybe that's the point? I guess? I don't know, I'm moving on. Burger Statue is alive. In the Station Square Adventure Field, you can find the Burger Shop. Outside of the Burger Shop, you'll see this statue of a man that you can pick up and toss around. Some fans have speculated that this statue is a possible reference to the Curse of the Colonel, a 1985 urban legend where a bunch of rowdy baseball fans in Japan tossed some Colonel Sanders statue into a river, which caused their team to go on an 18-year losing streak. I guess Speeps' iceberg is trying to convey that the burger statue might actually be alive? I'll admit, when I first played the game, I had no clue this was meant to be a statue. It just looked like a regular NPC. Perhaps there is some credence to this iceberg entry after all. Sealed Christmas Trees. I don't know what this is referring to. The most that really came to mind were the Christmas DLCs where you can see the Christmas trees in Station Square. Not sure what else to add. Save Bird Bros. I found this on the Cutting Room 4's notes page for Adventure 1. In the scenes list data for Amy, one of the scenes is titled Save Bird Bros, which is pretty funny. The Amy Reflection. The title of this one sounds like a creepypasta, and again, I'm not sure what it's referring to. I guess maybe the mirror room in Twinkle Park? There's also the mission in SADX where Amy has to go through that room and find a balloon that you can only see in the mirror. I don't know, that's the best I could come up with. Remove screaming sounds. On the cutting room floor, in the unused audio section, there's a list of unused screams that belong to the E-Series robots. There's also unused screams for a random echidna character, which I'm gonna guess is from the Knuckles clan. Chaos Red Tentacles. There's an unused line from Tikal during the perfect Chaos boss fight where she says this. The tentacle turns red when you hit it. I'm gonna guess this was likely gonna be used for a scrap mechanic in the boss fight. Chow Transporter Torture Chamber. I think this one's referring to the Egg Carrier's Chow Garden. The Egg Carrier actually has a few rooms on one of its maps. You know, if you ever bother to look at the level maps. On the second map, room 2 is called the Torture Chamber, while room 4 is where the Chow Garden Transporter is. Realistic Blue Hedgehog. In the game's files, there's an image on it called DramaZero.GIF. And it's a low-resolution photo of artist Yuji Yukawa holding up a photo he drew of a realistic blue hedgehog. Yuji Yukawa was actually the one in charge of redesigning every character into their modern forms, so it's pretty obvious that this drawing was made as a joke during production. You can actually see a higher-quality image of this drawing in the 1998 Tokyo International Forum video, for those who are interested. Amy Censorship Special thanks to Censored Gaming for bringing this one to my attention. In earlier builds of Sonic Adventure, Amy's dress apparently flapped up when she started coming down from a jump. So in the final game, her dress stays perfectly still when she jumps. I assume this was changed for... pretty obvious reasons. SADX is based on a prototype. Yet another entry where I'm not entirely sure what it's trying to say. Ignoring the obvious jabs I can make about how SADX looks and plays worse, I think this part of the iceberg may be implying that the GameCube port might have been based on an earlier build of the Dreamcast version, rather than being built off the gold version that got released. I don't know how game production works, this is just a shot in the dark guess from myself and Omar. Windy Valley Beer. I mentioned earlier that Sonic Team went on a trip around the world and took plenty of photographs that would later be used as textures in the game, one of which is an angular stone that could be seen in Windy Valley. This particular stone apparently just so happens to be a national heritage, and is featured on a Peruvian beer, cause Kenya. 
Sonic X is the real director's cut. I'm assuming this is referring to the original Japanese version of Sonic X, and not the horribly butchered 4Kids English dub. Sonic X didn't just use the Perfect Chaos story arc when adapting the game, but the show actually uses unused dialogue that never made it into Sonic Adventure. Wendy made a really solid video showcasing this, which you sadly can't see anymore because her channel's gone, but if you ever come across properly translated English subtitles for Sonic X, then I recommend looking into it. Demonic Voices I thought this may have been referring to maybe some unused voice clips or something, but I can't seem to find anything on the cutting room floor. I've played Sonic Adventure all the way through more times than I probably should have, but I never came across any demonic voices before. Maybe this is a connection to the Satan texture? Or Speeps just wanted to put another creepy fact on the iceberg again. Amy wears inhibitor rings. This is a weird one. You see, Shadow the Hedgehog wears these golden bracelets, which are actually designed to restrain his power, which is why when he removes them in Sonic 06, he just becomes super godlike. But fans have noticed that Amy's character model also just so happens to wear the same bracelets. So it's basically theorized that the reason behind Amy's slow movement in SA1 might be because she's supposedly wearing inhibitor rings. If that is the case, then why does she bother wearing them in the first place? Transgender Representation the best I could find for this one was a Reddit post, where a user acclaimed Sonic Adventure for its transgender representation, because Gamma is apparently a female bird but has a male voice when they're a robot. So basically, Gamma was the first transgender representation in a Sonic game, and that's pretty epic. Secret Emblems In Sonic Adventure 1, there are 130 emblems to collect. Collecting all of them in the original Dreamcast version didn't do anything, but collecting them all in the DX ports lets you unlock Metal Sonic. You mostly unlock emblems by clearing the story mode, and different missions in the trial mode. However, in all three hub areas, you can find secret emblems hidden in certain areas. Some can be out in the open, while others can be obstructed by the camera angle. Sonic Adventure Gaiden. So, this is referring to a parody fan game made in 2001 that only had like two seconds of gameplay in it. It was set immediately after the events of Sonic Adventure and had music ripped directly from the game. It also featured heavily edited advanced like sprites, plus a homing attack, and even a language option. This game was somehow meant to be seen as a warning for fan game communities about how just because a game looks good in stats, screenshots, and soundtrack does not make it a good game. What a chad move. Blue Fog of Death. There's a vent area in Casinopolis that I like to refer as the Dilapidated Way, because that's what it's called on the soundtrack. In the DX version of Dilapidated Way, there's this strange blue fog for some reason. I honestly always loved the way this level looked on the Dreamcast, so the DX port once again looks like shit. Movie.bin Revisional Differences I'm gonna guess this one's describing how the FMVs for Sonic Adventure were put in higher quality when ported to GameCube. The one very weird difference is that the GameCube version uses the demo version of the opening FMV, instead of the regular opening from the Dreamcast version. You can spot the difference between these two when Tails flies on screen. In the original opening, Tails' mouth is closed, but the demo version has his mouth gaping open. I don't know why they bothered rendering two different versions of this cutscene with one minor difference, but that's there, I guess. Mystic Ruins Brain Alright, I assume that this was referring to a specific texture in Mystic Ruins that might look like a brain. I even downloaded a texture sheet from the texture resource, only to find out it was from the DX port, so it's probably totally worthless. The emerald on the shrine kind of looks like a brain. Like, maybe? I don't know anymore. Latin Dialogue Sonic Adventure doesn't have a Latin voice or text option, but in the game's E3 build, for some weird ass reason the Knuckles tribe spoke in Latin. I'm not sure why. Shadow the Hedgehog reference. This one doesn't apply to the original SA1 for pretty obvious reasons, but in the code for SADX, it features crayon drawings of both Shadow and Rouge. Actually, I wonder if that's what the Rouge cameo from earlier in the iceberg was referencing. This is in the code because the Chow Garden mechanics was actually carried over from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which included the drawings. At least that's what I'm assuming. 
Baked Rose Marijuana. <laughs> this is something you can notice almost immediately when you start Big's story. He apparently has a bunch of marijuana leaves around his house. I have no clue why, but that little detail always makes me laugh. Yuji Naka is the train station announcer. I think this one might be referring to the male train announcer in the Mystic Ruins. The voice actor for this train announcer was actually the late Steve Brody, who also voiced Gamma, and would later go on to voice Gerald Robotnik and the President in SA2. But I guess this iceberg entry is trying to make it seem like Yuji Naka himself was voicing the train announcer? I kinda doubt that. The train headed for Station Square will be departing soon. Casinopolis is rigged. In the Knights table in Casinopolis, you can get 10 cards, 5 green and 5 red. If you get 5 of the same color, you get a bonus. But due to some weird oversight with the card generator, the Jackal card doesn't spawn no matter what. You see kids, this is why you should never gamble. It's not fucking worth it. Michael Jackson cameo. This one is super vague, but from what Omar and I have gathered, while playing Big Story, at a specific point, when you talk to the hotel manager, he says something pretty different in both the English and Japanese versions of the game. In the English version, he says, there is someone here by the name of Frog, whereas in the original Japanese version, it was Michael, as my Keru. It's complicated, but our guess is that it's probably because Kiru is frog in Japanese, or maybe this was an intentional nod from Sega, referring to their collaborations with the King of Pop in the 90s, with allegedly Sonic 3, and later on with Space Channel 5. Shoshira Iramajiri video. Do not research. The Soshiri Imajiri video is a Dreamcast tech demo, which showed Iramajiri's head rendered in real time using various effects to showcase the graphical capabilities of the Dreamcast. One of the more memorable parts is seeing Sonic running through his head in a blink and you'll miss it fashion, featuring his Dreamcast model. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the do not research text, it's just a reference to the original Mario 64 iceberg, which inspired a plethora of iceberg images to appear, including this very iceberg by Speeps that I'm looking at right now. Chow grow up slower when raised by Amy. I'm not sure if this is true, but apparently Chow can age slower when they're being cared for by Amy. If any Chow experts are watching, please tell me what you know in the comments. Drug addiction theories. What were they on when they made this game? Weed? Like big? Got him. I didn't have anything to put for this one. I'm sorry. Suicidal NPCs. There are several NPCs you can talk to in Sonic Adventure. A lot of them have their own little subplots going on as you progress through the story. I'm guessing this part of the iceberg is trying to point out that there are several weird subplots with pretty heavy topics to them. The most info I could find on at least one suicidal NPC is the child NPC talking about his mother being depressed, and he's sad about it too. I think the E3 builds also had some differing dialogue, with the most infamous one I could find being depressed longer. Honestly, Cybershell made a pretty solid video looking at some of the more well-known NPC facts, so I recommend checking out his video when you guys can. Mystic Ruin Shack. By the minecart entrance, you'll come across this wooden shack, but you can't go inside it and it serves no purpose at all. And even the window frames are made of wood. I like to think that this shack belongs to the Mystic Ruins Explorer. Sonic Murderer Theory. Pretty vague, but yeah, Sonic's a fucking murderer. Super Sonic is behind the train station. I think this is just a reference to that stupid truck easter egg in Pokemon Red, where for years people rumored that if you somehow move the truck, you can find Mew. You can't play as Super Sonic in any part of the game, aside from the last story, so I'm pretty sure this is just a Pokemon callback, or maybe even a reference to the Luigi and Mario 64 theories. Angel Island Property Market. Omar and I concluded that this fact might be referring to how at the end of Ice Cap, you come across a small village, which you never get to go to. What's this village for? Why is it here? I have no fucking clue. Drop three dozen men in the manhole. I guess this one's trying to convince people to drop 36 Burger Man statues into the manhole in Station Square, but I honestly fucking doubt that this'll do anything. Or maybe it'll trigger some kind of hidden creepypasta e easter egg to show up. So go try it for yourselves, kids. To Call Paradox. I guess this one's based on the theory about how, throughout each character's stories, To Call randomly sends them back in the past at some point, giving them information from the past that could potentially affect their futures, thus causing a paradox, I guess? 
Chow sexual exhaustion. <laughs> According to Speeps, a friend of theirs made the discovery that if you try having a Chow mate by using the life through too much, it'll actually kill the Chow. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Egg carrier visible from Station Square. I don't think this one's entirely true. You can travel to the egg carrier by boat, however you can't see the actual egg carrier in the Station Square hub area. But there is the one NPC that says they can see the egg carrier from the ocean. Not sure what they must be on about, but in the actual game, you can't see shit. Play as Sally Acorn. If you're a full-blown furry, you know exactly who Sally Acorn is. But if you're not, she's from Sonic Sat AM and the Archie comics. But she's not actually playable in Sonic Adventure, though I'm sure there's plenty of mods out there that let you play as Sally. Hidden Religious Subtext I think this one is, more or less, incredibly vague, and has a lot to do with subtly hidden stuff throughout the game's story. Chaos is seen as the God of Destruction, who brings about a near apocalypse to Station Square by flooding the entire city. And perhaps Sonic is the messiah who saves the world from pure destruction. Really, you can get a lot of different meanings from this entry by however the hell you look at it. Game Over Oshima Funeral Dirge. If you haven't heard the Game Over music from Sonic Adventure, well, it sounds incredibly depressing. Almost like a funeral dirge, which is basically a sad music composition to accompany one's funeral. Oshima is referring to Naoto Oshima, the man who designed Sonic, and Sonic Adventure would be the last main Sonic game he'd ever work on, before leaving Sega shortly afterward. I don't know why Speeps included Oshima's name in this entry, but I guess now we know what song to play at his funeral. Chow Adventure Morse Code Messages Chow Adventure was a minigame you could install on the Dreamcast VMU, and the minigame could basically be used to level up your Chow faster. You could also check their stats here since that was the only way you could do so on the original Dreamcast version. Visual memory units had little speakers on them, so I'm guessing this entry is referring to how there's probably some Morse Code hidden messages to be found with them. I don't understand Morse code, so to anyone else who's better educated in this field, please let me know what you can find. Stop it. Stop what? You're talking about me and Morse code. You know what? Joke's on you, because I know Morse code. Ha! Ashura Glitch 2.0 This is a reference to an infamous glitch that can happen when playing with Sonic 2's debug mode. If you go to Emerald Hill and spawn a bunch of waterfalls, it'll mess up Sonic's color palette and make him green and black for some reason. Fans made an entire OC out of this color palette glitch and named it Ashura, but I don't actually think you can get Ashura 2.0 to really appear in Sonic Adventure, but I'm sure there's a mod out there for it. Knuckles Temporal Displacement A temporal displacement is when a certain element from one time period gets continuously misplaced into different time periods, and if not corrected, a temporal displacement could have some devastating effects on the timeline. Knuckles gets sent back in time by Tikal on two different occasions, so I guess maybe a temporal displacement probably occurred. Then again, Tikal did return him back to his timeline almost immediately both times, but if there was a negative effect from this, then I'm sure every other character that Tikal took back in time must have suffered the same effect. South American Curse one of the places that Sonic Team went on a trip to was South America, with the intent of researching stuff for Sonic Adventure. I'm not really sure what this fact is trying to say, or what kind of curse might have been put on Sonic Team, but one theory that Omar brought to me, perhaps the curse is, after visiting South America and releasing the game, it slowly led to several core members of Sonic Team leaving in the later years, specifically happening right after Sonic Adventure came out. That's Omar's theory, and I'm just gonna stick with that, so let's move on. Vaporwave Station Square This is a reference to a rare graphical bug that can happen when you play the Dreamcast version on an emulator, which could apparently cause the hub areas to become a metallic neon rainbow. I can't really find any footage or screenshots of this, but if this glitch is true, that's some pretty crazy shit. 
Oshima Balance Philosophy. I don't really know what this is referring to, but I found a tweet by Gregor Arnett praising Oshima's design balance philosophy, like when it came to the way he designed his characters. This probably isn't what the fact is talking about, but this was honestly the best I could do. Also heads up, I have nothing at all for the subsonic distortion field entry either, so I'll just move on. G-Man Presence. The G-Man is a mysterious character from the Half-Life series, who usually pops up at random parts of the games. So according to Speeps, apparently there's a very similar looking NPC in Sonic Adventure that wears a blue suit and appears in the backgrounds of certain cutscenes. I'll have to look out for him the next time I play the game. Also related, and a bit of a bonus fun fact, in the cancelled Dreamcast port of Half-Life, you can actually find Japanese copies of Sonic Adventure and VMUs in the game when you smash open crates. I thought that was a pretty cute easter egg, even though this port was never officially released. Question mark. When you beat all six of the characters' main stories, you'll unlock the final Supersonic story. However, instead of seeing Supersonic on the character select, you'll see this golden question mark in his place. I'm guessing Sonic Team did this because they didn't want to spoil what Supersonic was going to look like on the character select. Sonic the Hedgehog is real. The final part of the Sonic Adventure Iceberg. I completely understand this one. Seriously, I totally get it. If you couldn't already tell, this iceberg has been speaking nothing but facts up to this point, and at the very bottom, it clearly saved the best for last. Guys, it's so obvious. Sonic the Hedgehog is real. He has broken into our reality and is now living among us. In fact, this whole time I was working on this video, he's been standing right here on my desk, just watching. Wow. Thanks again for watching my Sonic Adventure Iceberg video. I want to give another special thanks to Speeps Highway for granting me permission to make a video on their iceberg, and an extra big thanks to my friend Omar for helping me write and research a few parts of this video. This whole thing definitely wouldn't have been possible without his knowledge and research. I love Sonic Adventure, and that's about it.